Here we are in part two of our series on loops, and we'll talk about the do while loop. And the do while loop is different from the while loop. Remember we said the while loop performs a test and then executes the code within the body of the loop when the test is true. So while loop executes test condition first, the do while loop is the opposite it actually executes the code within the body of the loop and then evaluates the test condition. Right. So we're going to have the keyword do, we'll have curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets is the code that we call the loop body, right? That's what we want to execute then inside the loop and then keyword while and then the test outside. And so the way that flow of control goes is right, that block of code inside the body of the loop executes then it checks the test condition. As long as the test condition is true, it will loop back up right, and execute the same block of code again and keep looping through this same sequence until the test condition is false. When the test condition is false, then it goes on and executes the next, the next line of code following uh, the end of our loop. So here's the syntax of the do while loop. Again, the keyword do. Opening left curly brace, so that's the start of the body of the loop. Right curly brace, end of the body of the loop. And so then you can have as many statements as you want inside here. Right? Followed by the keyword while, and then our Boolean test expression. Right? And now there is a semicolon after this test condition. So a little bit different syntax than the while statement. But we have to get used to that. The other form is if you only have one statement you want to execute within the body of the loop, then you do not need the curly brackets. You can say do, put this one C statement in here. So C statements end with semicolons. Right? So you put that one statement in here that ends with a semicolon and then perform the test expression. Right? So that's the general form of the do while loop. And so we're going to write an example then. Here's some example code that looks similar to our while loop. And uh, let's see, what it does is we're going to end up printing out the numbers zero, one, and two as we did in our original while loop example. We initialize this variable count to zero. We say do, and we print out then count. So that first time count prints out, we get the zero. And then we add one to count. We come down here, we perform the test while count's less than three. Well, count is equal to one the first time while one is less than three is true. So then our code goes back to the first statement in the body of the loop, which is a C out statement. Our value of count is now one, right? So it prints out one. Then this line of code executes and it says add one to what's in count. Well, count has one in it. We add one to it. We assign it back to count. Count now has value of two in it. We say while count's less than three. Count is two. So while two is less than three is true, we loop back up and we're going to print out the value of count, which is where this two prints out. We're going to add one to count. Two plus one becomes three. Count becomes three. While count is less than three is no longer true. So we do not go back, right? Our program would go to the next line of code, which would be the return zero in this case. Remember, do while executes at least once. While is not guaranteed to execute once, right? While and for may execute zero times. If the test condition fails right away, it doesn't execute. So while and for loops test before executing statements in the body of the loop. Now let's look at another example of a countdown. And let's actually run this countdown example. So there's our do while example here. Let me grab the code for the other. Paste in this. Let's Go ahead and watch what it does. Of course. All right, so enter a countdown value start. Well, I'm just going to enter a 
a value of five to start with. T minus five, T minus four, T minus three, T minus two, T minus one, zero and blast off. Let's look at how all of that happened. All right, we've got a variable here named start. And so we say do, and what I'm going to do is I'm printing out then this message to the user. This is what we saw here, enter the countdown start value. And I'm telling the user it should be within the range of one to 100. And so we use CN to read this. And then we say, well, while start is less than 100 or greater than 100. So if the user enters something beyond the range, right? Zero, negative one, negative 15, that's less than the one we wanted. Or if they enter something greater than 100, we should stay in this loop. Let's see an example of that. So let me just, let's rerun. All right. So if we enter a number less than one, zero is less than one. So what happens is this test was true. Start is less than one. So this is while start is less than one or while start is greater than 100. Well, as soon as this becomes true, we know the input to a logical or as soon as any of the inputs are true, it knows the whole expression must be true. Then it will not evaluate this, right? C, C++ uses what's called short circuit evaluation. As soon as it knows, right, when there are multiple test conditions, as soon as it knows the, out, the logical outcome, right, it does not go execute the other test conditions. There's no reason for it to. So it makes the program run faster, right? So while Start is less than one. We entered zero, zero is less than one. This was true. It looped back up and asked us to once again, enter the, enter the value, right? And so now let's say what happens if I say 101? Well, 101 is greater than our hundred. So again, it looped back up. If I finally put something in here that fits, like we had five before, we see it counting down. So after we get out of this loop, right? We get out of this loop when this, Test condition is false. So that time I entered what, five or six. Then we come into this do loop and this says, go ahead and print out T minus. It's going to print out our starting value. So notice here, then I entered five. So our starting value is five. Now here I'm using that decrement operator, that post decrement operator. And so what that's going to do is it's going to print out the value in start. And then it will decrement start by one. And then this line, something we haven't done in class yet, this actually just puts our code to sleep for one second. And in order to do that, we have to include this threading library and the chrono library. Right. And so we actually then call this function sleep for. We have to scope it. It's in the standard namespace. It's in a class called this thread. So we have to scope it with all of that. We call the function sleep for, and we say, well, how long do we want our program to go to sleep? Well, we go to sleep for one second. Right. And so this function seconds, right, this has been defined inside the Chrono library, which is in the standard namespace. And I said, once see where that example came from or learn a little bit more about it. Actually, let's pop open the note view, because if you pop open the note view, And I thought that would show up on your side, but it's only just popping up on mine. <sighs> Sorry about this. Let me just swap the views. All right, so over in the notes view, right? actually then got a reference to where this came from. 
right. So in this case, like I said, this is going to sleep for one second. Then it'll come evaluate our test. So while starts greater than zero, we see it then slowly counting down, right? This is going to be true the first time. We went from five to four. Four will be greater than zero. We loop back, right? We print out T minus four. We uh, decrement one from start. Right? We sleep for one second. And so you can see this loops through five, four, three, two, one. And when it gets to be zero, right? Zero is no longer greater than zero. This is false. So it comes down here and it prints out zero blast off. Right. So we actually saw our program actually slowing down because that sleep for actually stopped our program from running. It actually put it to sleep for a little bit. And let's do one last thing here. All right. So again, if you're not really understanding how the uh, postfix decrement works, we could make this a little more clear by saying we said we wanted to print out the value in start and then we want to subtract one from start. So a clearer way to write this program is we can now say start is equal to start minus one. And effectively, that's what's happening is we're printing out the value of start, then we're decrementing start what's in starts memory. And if we run this again, again, we enter five. You can see we're still going to get t minus five, four, three, two, one. That is just written in an easier to understand method. Probably, I think. Back when I learned to do this, like I said, we use the increment and decrement operators. I would say go with this version because it's probably easier for you to understand. It's easier for most anybody to look at this and know exactly what order this is happening in. And it'll probably it'll probably keep your program from from uh, and count, potentially creating other errors. Um, if it ever needed to be modified. So we should probably write it in a slightly more, in this more clear manner. My old C, uh, the way I learned C before, showing through in my C++ here. All right, that's, I think, basically it for do loops. We All right, too many monitors, too many buttons here. All right, so the last thing is just the side-by-side -side comparison of the flow charts. On the left, we have do while. On the right, we have a while. Just again, to reiterate the point, that in a do, a do while loop is guaranteed to execute at least one time. The reason being is it executes the statements or the task in the body of the loop before testing the test condition. A while loop may not execute at all. If this test condition is false the first time, it will not execute the body, the statements in the body of the loop. So while loops test the condition first, do while loops test the condition after executing statements in the body of the loop. All right, so that's it for do while loops. I think we you probably more commonly will see while and for loops used, uh, but certainly you will encounter do while loops every so often. All right.